It's been a few months and I've been using the Genomi Cover Stitch Machine to sew up a lot of knits. So I'm going to share the stitches that I use it the most for. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jennifer Moore, helping you discover your love of sewing. And let's just address the elephant in the room. My hair is a lot shorter. This is the first video I've taped with the new haircut. If you'd like to see it all going down, I'm going to link it below. Check it out on our family channel, More Approved. But I'm really here to talk about the Janome 1000 CPX. It's a machine I've been using and loving to sew and hem knits. So I'm going to share some of the common stitches that I use it for. And we're beginning with the chain stitch. Now the chain stitch can actually be used sort of in place of a sewing machine. So you can take your knits and I'm just going to take two knits here and I am going to sew a hem with them. And actually, I've kind of discovered a way where you can sort of substitute your cover stitch machine for a serger. So I'm starting off with one needle, as you can see right here. You can actually use this to sew a seam and it gives it about a half inch seam allowance. So this is great for sewing knits, like say if I was gonna make a linden sweatshirt, something like that. So all you have to do is Put your presser foot down, put your seam in, and it'll actually lock the stitch at the beginning. And I'm actually gonna move this back a little bit, just a tad. But check this out, you can sew seams, and I'm using white thread on black fabric just so you can see it better. And then when you get to the end of your row, just raise your needle in the most upright position. Raise your presser foot, lift the presser foot, and then yank this thread here, cut it, and then pull your entire piece back a little bit and that will actually automatically lock your threads. So yeah, you've got your seam right here and we're actually gonna go ahead and put a second needle in it and I'm gonna show you how you can sort of use your cover stitch machine as a serger. So just insert your second needle as far as it can go and then tighten the screw up here using your tiny little baby screwdriver. So it's really easy. You actually don't have to re-thread the entire machine, just lift your presser foot and I remembered which thread. So I actually keep all three needles threaded at once. So when I want to switch it out, all you have to do is bring your thread down like this and then thread that needle and you are good to go again. You don't actually have to keep threading and re-threading your machine every time you switch the setup. There we go. And then you can use this little hook back here to drag this out. And now you've got two needles threaded. I'm actually gonna try to run this under the presser foot. And then use the tweezers. You can actually use the tweezers to grab it. So now I've got my two needles set up. So say you wanna take this piece of fabric where I've got the seam allowance here and you want to enclose these edges. Sort of like a flat felt seam, but not really. This is just something I made up. I don't know what, if there's a name for this, but I'm actually just going to Press the seam allowance to one side and then I'm going to cover stitch this along the seam allowance here. So I'm just going to place this. I'm going to line it up with the edge of the foot. I do want to get one of those transparent feet but I haven't gotten around to it yet. All right, And this is going to be again about a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to just line this up around the edge of the presser foot and you almost want the you want your seam allowance to match up almost with the needles. So I'm actually gonna put it a little far past that. So I'm gonna line up the fabric. I'm actually gonna line up the fabric with the end of the needle plate and then just start stitching away here. And notice I'm keeping the seam allowance towards the presser foot here. One more revolution, and I'm gonna lift up my presser foot. Grab these two threads here. Yank this back. Now I've got a decorative cover stitch on the right side, and on the wrong side, I have enclosed my seams. So you can actually use the cover stitch machine to do some of the functions of a serger which I discovered this just by playing around with it. With my needle placement, I've actually got the needles closer together, but you could actually space them out so you could have the needle on the left and the right side and no middle needle. 
And in that way, you would have a wider network of stitching on the back. You could also do a triple stitch if you wanted to, but this way you actually do enclose your raw seam allowance on the inside, and then the right side of the fabric, you've got a nice looking cover stitch. And of course, the most common reason to get a cover stitch machine is for hemming knits. So we're actually going to hem some knits right now. I've got this piece of black stretching knit fabric. It's ribbed and I've actually already folded over a half inch hem. So we're gonna go ahead and hem this. And I actually used Elmer's washable school glue just to keep the hem in place. So I'm gonna put this right side up with the half inch hem on the bottom and I'm gonna line this up with the edge of the presser foot. You can change the presser foot pressure but I've already gotten it about as loose as it can go. And I'm gonna put my stitch length around a three. Oh, and for all of these stitches, my tension is about one and a half for the needles, and then my tension is zero for the looper. And I'm using a woolly nylon looper thread. So now we're gonna go ahead and hem this knit. I'm going to line up the edge of the fabric again with the edge of the needle plate. So this is really easy. So I've got my right side down and just start start stitching and I personally I know I've seen some reviews online talking about skip stitches I'm using the needles that came with the machine I have not experienced any skip stitches myself I've had pretty good luck so we're just gonna keep stitching this entire row and this is a fairly medium weight fabric and then yeah once you get to the end just lift up your presser foot And then again, pull your threads out to the front, clip them, pull everything to the back, and this will actually effectively lock your stitches all to the back. And those are the three most common stitches I use the cover stitch machine for. If you also have a cover stitch machine, let me know what you use yours for. Do you have any challenges, any tips that you can share with us? Feel free to comment. And if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. I put out one every week and we have a live show and discussion every Sunday at 3 p.m. I've also got a few other cover stitch machine videos. So if you're in the market for one or if you're just looking for help, feel free to check them out. I will link them and I will see you next time for another edition of The Sewing Report. I'm Jennifer Moore.